how do you win matches? Well, you know, um, I like to travel light, you know. It can be pretty tiring walking around all day, you know, with my DS. It's pretty heavy. So I think that the extra baggage... Uh takes out from my, uh, my overall stamina, so I like to travel light. I agree. That's that's probably the way to go, but you can never doubt any luck. I'd probably have like a couple like Psyducks or something with me. But uh, anyway, guys, that's enough for me. These two competitors are going to go at it. They're both at 4-1, so this is going to be a huge matchup here. You have to only lose twice to make it to day two, so they're both on the edge. Guys, good luck in your match, and uh, let's send it back over to the commentators. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, it's really awesome, really refreshing when you get to see a little bit of personality <laughs> on these trainers. Uh, Wolf does not want to travel with a lot of stuff. The DS is enough. The DS is definitely enough. Absolutely. You know, hopefully you know, he doesn't have too much weight in his shoulders going to this battle. So, you know, he can play loose, <laughs> make all the predictions he needs to make because you know, there's just no stress. You know, he's, he's feeling light. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Wolf definitely doesn't uh, lack for personality, so always fun to get him out on the stage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's, he's a great guy. And, of course, both these guys, as Justin said, they are 4-1, and one, which means that Whoever does not take the win for this match has to win out in order to make it to day two tomorrow, where the competition is going to be even stiffer. Yeah, absolutely. And these are two players that I think most people would have expected to make it to day two, yes. right? So having that pressure on one of these players is big. You know, Wolf is a two-time Masters National Champion. here. Definitely. And we're going to go right ahead and jump into the match, into team preview, so we can get a handle on what these trainers are bringing today. Uh, we we see the, both, both trainers just intently deciding who they're going to be bringing. Like, like we had mentioned before, Team preview and your leads are so important uh, when you're playing a match of this caliber. You need to understand, try to predict what your opponent's going to bring and bring something accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, perhaps against no opponent is that more important than Wolf Click. Uh, he's notorious for the most part as a very defensive player. And playing against Wolf is not like playing against anyone else. You know, you're much yeah. more likely to play a game where uh, four Pokemon on one side aren't knocked out. And it's about playing to the timer and understanding you know, how to whittle down your opponent and kind of just gain those small advantages. Uh, so uh, definitely if you haven't been in a match with Wolf before, uh, that first time is always a real surprise. And uh, we'll have to see if John who is ready for this one. Absolutely. And we're going to be watching, of course, from John's perspective. Wolf is going to lead out with the Thunderous and the Kangaskhan. Uh, as John leads out Azumarill and Wapani, a Pokemon that we don't see very often or that I haven't seen yet today. Yeah, uh, definitely not something we see too often. Uh, John did bust this out, uh, I believe, on the stream, actually, in uh, Madison when we put him on there. So uh, John's been working with some of these Pokemon uh, for the course of the season. And I think that's something that's always nice to see. When you get to Nationals, you've kind of just kept, kept improving, kept iterating on your team. Uh, now he's going to have a heck of a challenge here facing down Wolf. Uh, for Wolf's credit, he's got a more standard looking team here. Yep. Uh, definitely, we've seen a few Kangaskhan and Thunderous in our day. Definitely, so. only a few. Yeah, but, uh, but still, I mean, with Wolf, it's a little bit surprising, too. We go, uh, these are definitely, I guess Thunder is a defensive Pokemon, but certainly not the Pokemon you try to use to have an amazing 4-3 victory at 15 yes. minutes. So uh, maybe Wolf uh, turning on the offense a little bit. <laughs> We're going to see John taking out his Lopini and going out into the Togekiss here, a very defensive Mon. Uh, and Wolf is actually going to withdraw that Kangaskhan, possibly fearing uh, being outsped by that Lopini uh, with the fake, uh, faking out. Uh, Amoogus is going to come in for it. Azumarill goes for Protect. Oh, so a very safe turn on John's end. Uh, and Thunders is going to Thunderbolt the Azumarill slot, which is going to take no damage. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, one struggle with this situation right now is that, uh, you know, Thunderous, as an electric tech Pokemon, is now against two Pokemon weak to electric type attacks. And yep. Azumarill, you know, it survived for a turn here, but uh, yeah, kind of a tricky spot. Uh, looking like, however, uh, Togek is most likely not going to be knocked down by a single Thunderbolt. So Amoogus is or Amoongus, rather, as uh, Azumarill, is pretty excited here. I'm most likely going to go for that belly drum. I don't think either of these uh, relatively defensive Pokemon are going to be able to prevent that from happening. Yeah. Uh, it's going to come at a cost here. Togekiss is going to take some damage, probably get put to sleep. But uh, the belly drum is open. However, uh, it does set up for a Rage Powder Thunderbolt the next play. Absolutely. And we're going to see a follow me from the Togekiss redirecting any attacks towards it. Uh, of course, uh, the taunt is going to come through to kind of stop that from happening here on out. The Togekiss is going to get uh, taken out. The, the uh, Belly Drum is going to come out from John's side. That brings Az uh, Azumarill's attacks that sky high maxed out, as you guys can see on screen, and he's going to eat the Citrus Berry to restore the health, at least some of the health that he had, had to spend on that Belly Drum. Uh, we're going to see a Spore connect onto the Togekiss, but the Azumarill here sitting at Max attack is a huge threat. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, a Rage Powder and a Thunderbolt seems like it's likely here, but I want to draw attention to something Wolf did that I think is very smart. This is a game one. Wolf doesn't know John's items yet. So it probably looks a little strange that he both taunted and spored the same Pokemon. It's like, well, why are you going to do that? Both of these things stop Togekiss from uh, using Follow Me. Uh, in addition to you know, getting the spore on a Switch, uh, Safety Goggles Togekiss is not unheard of, yes. and uh, that would have been a huge problem here. If he'd just done, gone for a Thunderbolt Spore, Togekiss had survived and then been immune to the Spore, uh, Wolf would very likely have just been hosed in this game, <laughs> or he's smart enough to find a different way to shut uh, Togekiss down, and it's a smart play by a veteran player. Definitely, and Azumarill's going to go ahead and go for the Protect. A Thunderbolt is going to once again get blocked by that Protect. Togekiss is asleep. Wolf does not feel the need to target down a sleeping, taunted Togekiss. Uh, Spore is also, uh, he predicted that switch, and I'm assuming there. Yeah, another wise play by a veteran player. Uh, John on this side uh, isn't just going to let Azumarill get blown up for free, so you know, he protects, he burns a turn of that sleep on Togekiss, but again, we're seeing the advantage of both taunting and sporing. Uh, now, if Togekiss wakes up, uh, it's still not going to be able to follow me. It yeah. is taunted. So, uh, Wolf covering all of his bases here, and in spite of the power of that belly drum, uh, Azumarill in pretty good shape, although I'm a little impressed. Okay, I was saying we there still we this time. I was surprised that to see last yeah, You were surprised we didn't see it, but Wolf goes ahead and uh, goes for the Rage Powder so that it can distract the Azumarill if it doesn't go down to this Thunderbolt, but it's going to live on 7 HP. 7 HP, the Togekiss, of course, is still taking a nap over on the side of the field, and a return is going to come through uh, and really destroy that Amoongus. Uh, the Rocky Helmet, though, is going to take the Azum Azumarill out. Yeah, poor Azumarill, fancy hero there. Uh, gets the knockout, yep. but uh, it comes at a cost, that Rocky Helmet showing its value. Now, normally, something just irritates Kangaskhan, but uh, poor Azumarill, he just barely survived. It's probably like, great, like, this is my battle, I get to do this. <laughs> and he just wanted to so show much. off his high attacks that, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen when the Rocky Helmet comes through. Uh, Excadrill's gonna land on John's side of the field as Landorus comes out, getting intimidated off well-timed Landorus. Uh, pretty lucky that the Excadrill came out at that point, uh, reducing its attack stat. Yeah, I'm super excited to see this extra drill, and we just see the Mold Breaker. Okay, we're yep. seeing a classic combination here. Uh, this is a duo that made it to the top four of U.S. Nationals in 2013. Uh, as piloted by Randy Qua, something he'd kind of used all year and kind of iterated on. So, uh, John Hu, I guess, has some of his own tricks with the low pony Azumarill thing, and uh, bring back an old favorite as well. Absolutely, but we're going to see Landers go for the Earthquake. Only going to hit the extra drill, but it's going to hit the extra drill hard. We're going to see it live on one HP with a Focus Sash. Not going to be going down just yet. Extra Drill's going to go for the Rock Slide. It is at minus one, but it'll still do some damage to that Thunderous. Uh, Landers is going to take it a bit better than its uh, genie brother over there. Thunderous is going to go ahead and hit the Togekiss with a Thunderbolt, bringing it down to 95 HP. Togekiss is going to wake up and get an Air Slash off on that Landorus, but that is some good, dude, that's a good turn for Wolf, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. I, he gets to learn about the Focus Sash and Extra Drill without really losing anything yes. for it. That's big information. Uh, you know, Extra Drill often. Uh, when Randy used it, it could either have a, a variety of items, like Ground Gem, which doesn't exist anymore, and Life Orb were also a possibility, so, and Choice Band, actually, too, so good information. Definitely. We're going to see a pretty slow turn, but a pretty good turn for Wolf. Uh, Excadrill's going to go down to that Earthquake. Togekiss is protecting itself, so nothing else is really going to happen on this turn. But Wolf looking really good here, bringing, getting the first knockout. Thunderbolt, of course, going to get protected, and John has to send in a new Pokemon here. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, big advantage for Wolf now. Uh, you know, Togekiss getting weakened. Wolf's Mega is still safe in the back. Yes. Just hanging out, waiting for its turn. And, gee, it's, it's tough to see how uh, John's going to dig his way out of this one. But, I mean, there's still time. I mean, John's own Mega is still here. Oh, we haven't seen it do anything yet, so it could be a bunch of tricks. But, uh, you know, Togekiss really going to struggle with this Thunderous. Landorus very likely to be holding a Choice Scarf here, so uh, it's not going to be able to do much to Togekiss. But uh, still great positioning for Wolf. Definitely, and like you said, if, if, if that Landorus is indeed Choice Scarf, uh, although the, the Lopany does have the ability to fake out and make it flinch and kind of slow it down for a turn, it's only a turn. We're going to see Wolf actually withdraw that Landorus, uh, probably wanting to get a free Intimidate off on that Lopany uh, since it's, uh, John's down to his last two Pokemon. Kangaskhan is going to come in that safe Mega, who has yet to Mega Evolve, switching it in to a spot that Wolf probably feels is not going to get targeted down by a Fighting-type move uh, thanks to Landorus' Flying-type, but we're going to see exactly what happens here. Thunderous is going to protect playing it safe. I believe that's the first time Thunderous actually protected, and a Fake-Out is going to go on the Thunderous, uh, trying to preserve that Togekiss not getting any damage. Uh, it's going to get a little damage off from that Kangaskhan. Actually, a sizable amount because it's not Mega. Yeah, I mean, not a bad chunk there. I mean, Togekiss actually uh, a somewhat underestimated offensive Pokemon. It actually has a great special attack stat. It's just you know, a Pokemon that's kind of built around defense, so typically uh, players don't train in it to increase it any more than that. But, yep. uh, you know, Togekiss, that's a bad. It's got those stats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a bad Pokemon at all. Of course, now now that Kangaskhan came in uh, after Lopunny already used its Fake Out, if, if Wolf's Kangaskhan is carrying Fake Out, it's going to be able to get that off before the Lopunny. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Wolf at a pretty nice advantage here, but instead of just switching, uh, he's letting, just, Lander, letting Lander use a different move this time. He's just dangling the Kangaskhan in front of John and taking it right back. Like, oh my goodness. No shame. Getting the Intimidate off, though, of course, uh, making sure as little damage as possible can come from that Lapani. Togekiss is going to go for a Protect, fearing a Thunderbolt from the Thunders. We're going to see if that's exactly what Wolf did. Lapani's going to go for the Teeter Dance, confusing both of Wolf's Pokemon, and this is going to turn into a game of secondaries. Can Wolf's Pokemon break through some confusion? We're going to see Landers and Thunderers both take those spinning birds above their head. Uh, Thunderers is going to go for the Thunderbolt. Uh, Togekiss protects itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Wow, what, what a John Who strategy. Uh, <laughs> some of you may remember last year in the top four, he had that Confused Ray Sableye, and he's upgraded. He's like, confusing one Pokemon no. is not enough. I didn't do that. <laughs> no, definitely. Teeter Dance is not a move that you see too often, I feel like. But when you do see it, confusing every Pokemon in the field, timing it well, making sure you protect your Pokemon, uh, it, can really, it can really mess up your opponent's groove. As, because you're not used to dealing with it too, just yes. you have a plan, right? Absolutely, but Lunders is going to break through said confusion, go for the superpower, and take out the Lopany in one hit. Oh my goodness, that is a knockout that is pretty much going to secure Wolf's side of the field as a pretty, pretty locked in game up. Of course, we still got this confusion going on. Thunders is confused. It's going to hit itself and not being able to get that Thunderbolt off. We're going to see Togekiss go for the Air Slash, targeting down the Landers, uh, but it's not, it's not going to be enough. It's just not enough to take up the KO. Yeah, I guess uh, Wolf's strategy for dealing with Teeter Dance was to train his Pokemon with trust and love. Uh, <laughs> Landorus managing to attack through that confusion, and uh, he's pretty safe now, I think. Yeah, he's going to withdraw that Landorus, just not wanting to let it drop to the Togekiss. If the Thunders does, in fact, stay a little confused, maybe, I don't know, Wolf didn't love the Thunders just enough to break through that confusion. But it does, it snaps out, and it's going to get the Thunderbolt off, knocking out that Togekiss. So the first game is going to be in Wolf's favor. Yeah, that's a, a tough break for John there. Wolf played a really great game. Uh, he always seemed to have an answer, you know, when that Azumarill got set up, it didn't really get much done. Yeah. Uh, other than that, there weren't any knockouts, so uh, Wolf probably feeling pretty comfortable there, especially because he got to see John's tricks and dealt with them on the first try. Yeah. I feel like John, who is kind of one of those players where, in the first game of a best of three, you're in a very difficult position. I uh, use a lot of tactics that players aren't used to dealing with, uh, like the, I guess, Azumarill, period, we haven't seen yeah. very much of yeah, since last haven't. season. Uh, you know, Teeter Dance, like, is Teeter Dance even a real move? Like, <laughs> is this... What, what it's is just for today. It's yeah, just for today. Yeah, he actually invented this, this movie. He was teaching, like I saw in the hallway, he was teaching his Pokemon how to use this movie, I, thought of. I was wondering why John was spinning in circles in the hallway, right, yeah, but it makes perfect yeah, sense now. Exactly. Absolutely perfect sense. Uh, it, 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 like we were talking about before, the items, being able to figure out, Wolf got a lot of information from there. He saw the focus test on the extra drill. He got to see John's trick. So like you said, it's going to be a pretty tough game too, but these are both trainers that are here for a reason. So I don't want to count John out just yet. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't either. And I kind of really love the juxtaposition of the two teams where you've got Wolf, like this very standard, very defensive, a very safe team, you know, one of the more defensive players, and you know, on John's side, we've got uh, something very much in another direction. Yes, yeah, something, something unique, something crazy, something to kind of inspire. So we're going to jump into this match uh, right now. I believe we're going to be seeing them. I wonder, I, you know, game two is always interesting. I don't think it's soon enough to be able to pick your team very fast. I think game three is more like you've got a lot of information, but I don't think they have enough information to kind of choose their team on a whim. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in particular, uh, John has to be very careful yes. here. Uh, part of the difficulty of running a team as tricky as his is that uh, you know, it's easy to lose games very hard if you make yes. a misplay early, and he can't afford that now. No, he definitely cannot, because like we said, and we, we can't state it enough, one of these players is going to have two losses, which means they will have to win out for the rest of today in order to make it to tomorrow, in order to have a chance at winning an invite to Worlds. So we're going to see uh, Kangaskhan and Thunders come out for Wolf, of course, and the Gengar, who we did not see on John's side of the field with the low bunny. Absolutely, and I think this is really scary if you're Wolf, uh, especially not having seen Gengar before. Yes. I think there's definitely a non-zero chance that this is a Mega Gengar, and Lopunny will just choose not to Mega Evolve. Yeah. Uh, that would be my expectation if I was Wolf. Uh, so he's got to play this one pretty carefully. Kangaskhan doesn't deal with Mega Gengar very well at all, and uh, Wolf himself has actually won a regional this year with Mega Gengar. So yep. I guess if anyone should know how to deal with this, it should be him, right? Definitely, it should be, but like you said, it's a scary spot to be in. Gengar is just one of those Pokemon that is fast, and it can do a few different things things. There, it, Gengar has a lot of variety in this format, without a doubt. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what John's going to be doing with it. We're going to see Wolf withdraw the Kangaskhan, not wanting to potentially get burned, and Amoongus is going to come out uh, for the Kangaskhan. The Mega Gengar is here. We're going to see some shiny teeth on the field. Look at that thing. It is so beautiful. I love Mega Gengar. It's fantastic. Such a fantastic Pokemon. Uh, Thunderous is going to
gonna go for Texo. Wolf taking a very, very, very safe turn here, just switching in one of his bulkier mons. Lopin is gonna go for the fake out, but Thunderous is going for Texo. Gengar goes for a substitute, and that is terrifying. When you see a Gengar get behind a doll, you better run. Yeah, absolutely, but you can't because you can't, you can't run because then you lose, so yeah. it's just not an option. Yeah, absolutely. So, a uh, tough spot for Wolf here. A uh, really great lead by John. I think that, you know, with Wolf, he realizes he can't let his Kangaskhan get caught in with probably a Mega Gengar. Yes. Has to switch to something. Uh, probably, if Amoongus is the Pokemon that came in, I wonder if he, uh, what he had for options here. But Gengar at least gets a substitute before the taunt. Uh, and we're going to see, now that he knows that Lopini can carry that Teeter Dance, he does go for the taunt right away. Icy Wind is going to connect on both of, uh, both of Wolf's Pokemon here, doing a decent amount of damage for a non-same type attack bonus move. Like, it's not getting any stab bonus, but it's, it's still doing a good amount. Lopini can't Encore after the taunt, and we see the Spore connect onto the Lopini. So that was a huge taunt there. Yeah, absolutely. A big play by Wolf. I'm sure you would... I much prefer to have a taunt on that Gengar instead and not yeah. have to worry about that big substitute, but it does put him in a much better position here. Uh, Lopini's not going to be doing too much for the rest of the battle, probably, with that uh, Spore hitting it after it attacks. Yeah. So, uh, at least two more turns before we'll be seeing it attacking. Absolutely. I wouldn't and be Gengar's, too surprised to see that. Gengar's actually running Protect as well, going to protect its substitute, making sure that it's here. I think that John just kind of wants to kind of wants to burn this turn of sleep here. Lopini's going to stay asleep, but that's the one guaranteed turn. Lopini can wake up at any point from here. Amoogus is going to go Go ahead and target down that slot with a spore predicting a switch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's not too much less for Amoongus to do uh, other than trying to spore the Gengar if he you know, wants to try to get Thunderous to Thunderbolt it. But yeah. uh, if he wants that taunt first, Amoongus just kind of hanging out. Yep, no, definitely. We're going to see Gengar opt to go for the Shadow Ball, targeting down the Thunderous. It's going to do a lot of damage, but not enough because Thunderous just has that natural defense that's so, so beautiful. Makes it such a viable Pokemon. It's going to eat that Citrus Berry, gaining its health back. Lopin is going to wake up on a turn two, go for a Drain Punch onto the Thunders. It's resisted, so it's not going to do too much. But but it's still damage that I don't think Wolf wanted to see just yet. A Thunderbolt's going to connect and take out this, this substitute is going to go down here. Uh, and are we going to see the Spore connect onto the Gengar? We're going to see the Spore and it's going to target down the Gengar. So that thing is asleep. Uh, so this time we do see that play, right? It's kind of a, the mind game on both sides. You know, is Gengar going to attack expecting a Thunderbolt and a Spore? Or is it going to you know, expect a taunt yep. and, you know, not have to worry about getting the substitute up and be able to attack? Uh, John kind of plays it backwards there where he played uh, he ca I guess he didn't, he played it conservatively, but yes. yeah, the turn he needed to substitute, he did not. And uh, Gengar's sleeping for it. However, uh, Wolf's still kind of in a tough spot here. Uh, Lopini's not doing much, and we're going to see the switch here, so uh, John can actually bring something up to try to get some knockouts, take advantage of the Shadow Tag. Absolutely. We're going to see that John does bring in the Togekiss. Uh, Thunders is going to go for a taunt on that, on the Togekiss, making sure that it can't do any funny business, but the Air Celeste, of course, is kind of threatening to the Amoogus, even though Amoogus is a very defensive mod. It's still super good. But the Spore is going to come through on that Togekiss, so John's sitting here with two Pokemon, taking a nap, and Wolf's feeling pretty comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is a very wolf match, right? He's, he's not really using attacking moves. Nope. He just, he's taunting, he's, <laughs> he's sporing, he's, he's getting better position on the board. Uh, this is kind of the battle that Wolf had to commit to, though. You know, with having to switch out of that Mega Gengar the first turn, he did something safe, and these are the safest Pokemon he's got. Absolutely. We're going to see the Gengar and Togekiss both stay asleep, so we're going to see some damage output. Uh, Thunderbolt onto the Gengar. It is going to do a sizable amount, but leave it at 31, and Amoongus just keeps clicking Spore, because why not? Yeah, I mean, what else is he going to do? Uh, most likely only has Giga Drain for an attack. I can yep. do big damage to either of these Pokemon, and I'm shocked at how fast these guys are moving. Yes. To me, this is one of the matches that are very complicated, right? Uh, when you have uh, Shadow Tag involved, I think it becomes a very technical matchup, where yeah. you want to uh, be very careful not to click anything that that is going to just lose you the game. Uh, but these guys have been pretty quick with it. They're just, uh, they've are just they been in this battle before, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're going to see Gengar does stay asleep for another turn. The Rage Powder coming out from Amoogus just in case uh, anyone does decide to wake up and want to do damage. Togus is going to wake up and get an Air Slash off on that Amoogus. We're going to see just how much damage it does. Uh, it's going to do a good amount, but not enough to pick up the Knockout. And a Thunderbolt is going to connect on Gengar, kind of finishing that thing off. Shadow Tag is no longer a problem for Wolf. So that was an excellent turn for Wolf. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, the most important Pokemon on the team to knock out. Uh, not only is it the Mega Pokemon, but that Shadow Tag is just a huge problem for Wolf. Uh, it's a great way to you know, prevent his poor Kangaskhan from doing anything, as well as just to control the match. And uh, Wolf is in pretty nice position now, it's sort of, but, but now we're in another situation. We saw that Thunderbolt alone isn't enough to knock out Azumarill yep. after a Belly Drum. And you know, an Air Slash and a Belly Drum gets Wolf back in the same position he was in last game, but without Amoongus to help him this time. Exactly, and we did see the Taunt did wear off 
Uh, Togekiss is, if, it, if he wants to go for the follow me belly drum combo again, he does have, John has that option to do so. So as, as, as good as Wolf feels right now being up Amon, uh, this is definitely a dangerous field. They can go any way, and that's one of the most exciting things about Pokemon. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game to close, though, because there's that sleeping Lopunny that, in the back. That is true. Amoongus is going to switch out, which was perfect uh, for Wolf to get rid of that Shadow Tag, taking advantage of Amoongus' regenerator ability. Azumarill's going to play it safe, go for Protect. So we've seen two of Azumarill, well, three of Azumarill's moves now. Uh, Thunderous is going to go for the Taunt on that Togekiss, uh, making sure that we can't see any Follow Me business. Air Slash is going to come through on the Kangaskhan. As we saw last time, it does a good amount because Kangaskhan doesn't have any extra stuff from not being Mega Evolved. Yeah, absolutely. So, a uh, pretty safe turn by John this time. You know, he just he doesn't want to risk anything happening, and that's kind of what happens sometimes when you fall down in a series like this. You know, he could have gotten a belly drum up there for uh, no real cost, but uh, the problem, I guess, is we were in a situation like this. Like, you know, if you make one big mistake, yep. uh, that's the round. I mean, he's going to need to win out to make tap cut. Uh, Wolf, on the other hand, he's got this advantage. He can play a, bit, a little bit looser now. He's got a big lead in this game. Uh, you know, one big play is going to send him back to 5-1. And you know, his one loss was Aaron Zhang, so there's no yep. shame in that. Yeah, there's no shame in losing to Aaron Zhang getting paired up. I believe that was in round four. I believe it was round four, round three. Round four. And uh, it looks like that we're going to see the Mega Kangaskhan come out here. Uh, with Azumarill using Protect last turn, uh, it's unlikely that John's going to go for Double Protect. We'll find out exactly what he wants to do here. Uh, Togekiss cannot do anything but attack. Aqua Jet's going to come through and connect on the Thunderous, uh, just barely missing the knockout. Kangaskhan's going to get a return off on the Azumarill, uh, Azumarill, and it's going to do over half, popping the Citrus. Uh, does that mean that because of that Citrus, a Thunderbolt will not take it out? We're going to have to find out right now if Wolf... Oh, no, we got the double hit, of course, from Mega Kangaskhan with that parental bond ability. Uh, going ahead and making it hit twice. Kangaskhan's going to take another 30% from that Togekiss, but the Thunderbolt's going to come through on the Azumarill, and it's going to knock it out. Yeah, that's big. Uh, the last really remaining offensive threat on John's team. And uh, kind of a struggle when you play a team like John's. If this is the sort of thing that sounds fun to you as a player, you can be very careful with your offensive Pokemon. In this case, uh, kind of Gengar and Azumarill being the Pokemon that can really dish out the damage since Lopunny can't Mega Evolve. Uh, you know, if you give them up too easily, you kind of end up in a situation like this one where, uh, you know, the game should still be winnable, but yes. you know, how are you going to knock Pokemon out? Now, as you were saying before, Wolf plays a game where he tries to both slow down his opponent and put himself in a better position. So we're going to see the Landers come out once again, making sure that even though Lopunny can't Mega Evolve, just reducing its attacks that even further. So a fake out wouldn't be a big deal or whatever it decides to go for won't do as much damage as it would have before. We're going to see Kangaskhan just go for a Protect here. Wolf playing it extremely safe. Uh, like we, That's just the way Wolf plays, creating better scenarios. We're going to see a fake out connect on the Landers slot, not doing too much thanks to that Intimidate, and an Air Slash is going to be protected, keeping that Mega Kangaskhan around another turn. Now yeah, the bright side uh, for John, Togekiss taunt finally wears off. I yes. feel like I've been taunted for about 60 <laughs> turns this match. It's just like, Togekiss is firing those air slashes. Like, he doesn't care about follow me. It's not a support yeah. Pokemon anymore. Uh, Togekiss hungers for knockouts. It wants to pick up the KOs. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I mean, it might have the chance here, but uh, you know, it's just kind of a matter of uh, what cost of that knockout could come at. Uh, you know, if Lander starts throwing off rock slides here, it's going to be pretty dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Kangaskhan, even if all he gets is a sucker punch, could take uh, Lopunny pretty low. And, you know, John, you know, he's just so far behind. You've got to try to find a way to get knockouts without taking damage. But, you know, with spread moves and Landers, with priority move from Kangaskhan, it's tough. And, uh, in true wolf fashion, he's not going to risk it. Yeah, he's not. Wolf's just like, I have priority, but you know what? Priority's not guaranteed. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out into my Amoongus. Togekiss does go for the follow me. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see, like you said, the spread move, of course, is going to hit both Pokemon regardless. So Togekiss is going to take a sizable amount of damage because it is super effective. Uh, almost 50%, around 40%. And Lopin is going to bust out that teeter dance. It's going to start dancing the way that John showed it how to dance. Is that going to have an effect? Can John pull back with confusion? I mean, I think that's really the only way he can do it, right? Uh, kind of a wise play by Wolf to uh, avoid playing with these odds too much. Uh, but I mean, he's going to have to make some rolls here. Uh, of course, Wolf not using his priority attacks, which I guess wouldn't have worked on either yes. of these. And I guess either way, Wolf's priority is switching, right? Yes. I mean, that's. It's the way he plays the game, so it uh, makes sense here, but you know, part of the difficulty for John is not only does he need to, you know, he needs this win, but he has to get at least two knockouts, and you know, Togekiss, not exactly a ferocious damage dealer. As uh, much as it wants to deal yeah, damage it's, it's right now. Yeah, it's trying so hard. It really uh, is. And, you know, Lopunny, uh, without the Mega Evolution, not going to do a huge amount of damage either, so you see the clock ticking down, Wolf wisely not making more moves than he needs to. You Knows it's a disadvantage. You know, even if 
Keter Dance prevents him from knocking out the two remaining Pokemon on Jod's side. You know, he can win this game 3-2, he can win this game 4-2. Uh, the clock keeps tipping down, so Jod's going to be very opportunistic with his offense here. Absolutely. We're going to see Wolf go ahead and preserve that Landorus yet again, switching into the Kangon. He pulls a double switch, taking advantage of Amugus' regenerator ability. We can see uh, something we had not mentioned yet is the battle timer. We're sitting at almost four minutes. A Drain Punch is going to connect on the Kangaskhan. Not going to be able to pick up the knockout thanks to that Intimidate that happened prior. Uh, Lobby is going to recover a little bit of HP, but nothing crazy here. Uh, Togekiss is confused because of that Teeter Dance, but it danced with John as well, so we're going to see an Air Slash go ahead and just miss picking up the knockout on Thunderous. Oh my gosh, this would be such a frustrating turn if you're John. You're like, finally, I'm going to get my two attacks off, I'm going to pick up my knockouts yeah. and tie the game, and uh, neither Kangaskhan nor Thunderous actually go down. Uh, that Intimidate on Lopany is paying some dividends here, and we I kind of see the problem with the non-Mega Lopany. Uh, decisively, not a Fighting-type Pokemon, which uh, reduces the damage of the already somewhat uh, weak Drain Punch. Absolutely. You know, that same type attack bonus is something necessary that Lopany does take advantage of when it Mega Evolves. But besides that, it's, it's just one of those Pokemon that you do get put in a situation where the Mega Gengar was the right call, but it just it suffers so much from not getting that Mega Evolution. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's tough. You know, uh, Wolf... Probably going to protect the Kangaskhan, maybe make a switch here. You know, the amount of turns left where John can realistically get something done being reduced. And even Thunderous has Protect. Thunderous has Protect as well. So Wolf is just playing the slow game right now, being as safe as possible. And you know what? He, he's, a, he's a trainer that has won a lot. He has a lot of accolades under his belt. So he's doing something right, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've played Wolf at Worlds, and I think between the games I played against him, we knocked out like three Pokemon. <laughs> so, you know, Wolf is a master at this series. Uh, he, that would have been 2012, a year where he got second place at Worlds. Uh, he's there a two-time national champion. No one does this better than him. And he's in great shape now. He's going to probably withdraw both Pokemon. Uh, these are the two Pokemon John could have knocked out. He's got healthier Pokemon in the back. Yep. Uh, the Regenerate from Moongus doing serious work here. Definitely. And Tokikis is actually a little frightened, backed into a corner, goes for the Protect, uh, as Thunderous goes for the Taunt on the Togekiss. So that was a good call and the teeter dance is gonna come back out you know Wapani just loves dancing even if it's at the end of the game you know it feels down and out dancing will bring up your spirits so fast yeah, absolutely you know I mean John might need to win out but Wapani's still having a party and you yeah. know it's good to know that you know John's not letting anything get him down uh, I think that what's one of the weaknesses we're seeing of teeter dance though is that you know uh, John keeps having to protect Togekiss to avoid yes. uh, being confused. You know, it's like Earthquake, not like Heat Wave, where it hits all of the Pokemon. So Togekiss does need to protect to avoid being confused itself. And that just really uh, makes this timer even more di difficult for John to overcome because it keeps burning Togekiss turns. You know, it couldn't air slash that switch in yep. at Moongus unless he wanted to give up the ability to teeter dance. And he's not going to let that Thunderous go down just yet, even though I think it has maybe three or four hit points left. Landers, who is extremely healthy, is going to come back in. And I'm pretty sure this is just going to secure the victory for Wolf at this point. He's got two extremely healthy Pokemon on the field. Lopini's been intimidated so many times. I'm glad he keeps dancing even when it's intimidated. We can see just how little that Drain Punch does to the Landorus. Uh, and Togekiss here not going for the Protect, so most likely going to go for the Air Slash. We're going to see it connect on the Amoongus, which of course, because it's super effective, is going to do a good amount of damage, but not enough. Uh, Amoongus is confused. Will it hit itself in confusion? It is going to hit itself in confusion, bringing its HP, HP down even further. Yeah, John gets some big damage there, but he's running out of turns. You know, Amoongus, uh, at least can go for a protect. It's not yeah. guaranteed to hit it, but uh, John needs to knock out both of these Pokemon to have a shot at winning this game. Uh, so likely to be the last turn. Uh, once, if Wolf does lose a Pokemon here, he'll get 45 seconds again to move and select that last Pokemon. Yep. And uh, Amoongus could viably go down. You can see a, a confusion self hit in an Air Slash, but uh, unless Lopini has you know, like an ice gun, it's been hiding. It's gonna like bust <laughs> that out. Uh, well, pull, uh, pull, up, pull up Mr. Freeze from yeah, Batman. Just... That's what he's gonna need here. I think uh, John might be in a bit of trouble otherwise. Yeah, no, definitely. I don't think I don't think it has any pockets where it could possibly keep that ice gun. So we're gonna see the Amoongus actually take more advantage because uh, it wants to recover that HP thanks to the uh, regenerator ability that we've seen used so many times by Wolf. Superpower is gonna connect on the Lopini. It's not gonna be able to take that even a little bit. So officially, Wolf goes ahead and uh, makes this a 4-1 situation, which with the battle time of running out, he's clinched this match out. Air Slash is going to come through, though, and take out the Thunderous, so it is 3-1 right now, but uh, I think Wolf is... They, you saw both players shake hands, and that pretty much means good game. Yeah, absolutely. That clock kicking down 5-4, and will go down eventually to zero. <laughs> uh, really well-played game by Wolf here. Uh, Wolf doing what Wolf does best. Wolf absolutely. Winning, but winning slowly. No, without a doubt, Wolf, I mean, he's, he is a lone wolf. He's up here by himself, just him and his pack of Pokemon. Uh
Deciding what he's got to do, and he hunts slow, but he hunts well. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get his prey in this one. A really, really impressive victory, and Wolf Glick moves on to 5-1. 5-1, which means that John is now 4-2. Good luck, John. Win out the rest of the tournament, and we'll see you tomorrow as well. But that is a feat that's a little bit tough with the pressure being laid on.